Welcome, Benzinga Nation. You know we love to talk to executives from publicly traded companies to get the insights and the answers that we've all been looking for. And boy, do we have a great interview coming up. We're going to talk to Dr. Paul Peter Tack, who is the president and CEO of Candel Therapeutics. Ticker on the NASDAQ, by the way, is C-A-D-L. Dr. Tuck, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Great being here. I am so excited to talk about all the fun stuff you're working on. But before we get to that, give the viewers a quick overview of what is it that your company does. Yeah, Candel Therapeutics develops immunotherapies against very difficult to treat cancers. So think of a specific form of lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, uh, prostate cancer, and also brain cancer, glioblastoma. So all areas where there's a huge unmet need, a big opportunity. And we basically vaccinate the patient against the patient's own tumor. So we try to basically leverage the immune system of the patient and teach it how to recognize the patient's own tumor and recognize it and subsequently eliminate the tumor cells. You, and you know, what, what I learned about your company and what you're doing is that the similar drug, the same drug, not even similar, the same drug is kind of having impacts on different types of cancers. And we'll get to that here in a second. But you just had revealed data from an ongoing trial for CAN 2409 that showed great increased survivability in those with the pancreatic cancer. How much longer is that trial going to last? Yeah. So, yeah, we have fantastic data. And um, it, it's we focus on what really matters to patients and also to the regulators, the FDA, which is overall survival. Patients want to live longer with a good quality of life. And everybody kn knows that it's very difficult to treat pancreatic cancer. So we have uh, randomized patients in a small randomized clinical trial to uh, receive either the optimal standard of care, which means chemotherapy followed by chemo radiation. That is a combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And then we gave the patients CAN 24-9, in total two to three administrations, two to three injections into the tumor, or the patients only got optimal standard of care. And what we found is that the estimated overall survival in the active treatment group, in the patients who received uh, CAN 24-9, our, our investigational medicine, was 28.8 months, whereas the control group had only 12.5 months. So a dramatic difference between active versus control. It passes what I call the BOT, the bloody obvious test, complete separation of these lines. So what does that mean after, let's say, two years? In the active treatment group, patients were alive in more than 70% of the cases, 7-0, while it was only 17, 1-7% in the control group. So dramatic uh, difference. We got fast-track designation from the FDA, uh, we got orphan drug desi designation from the FDA, so clear recognition recognition by the regulators. Actually, there was a lot of interest in uh, uh, also on the stock market uh, on that day that we disclosed these data. So this study is completed from our point of view and uh, provides the rationale to do a large randomized clinical trial, which, is, which we call a phase 2B slash phase 3 clinical trial. So yeah, that, I was going to talk to you about the FDA, you know, the, the drug designation, which you already did cover. So now let's get to the elephant in the room in a positive way. You had the CAN 2409, which we've been talking about, but the success that it's seen in the non-small cell lung cancer, you've got some big news there. What's happening? Yeah, we very recently uh, presented data at ESCO, uh, a major oncology meeting, uh, and we presented the following. We focus again on a very difficult to treat disease, which is non-small cell lung cancer patients who have stage three or stage four disease. Most of them had stage four disease, 90%. That means metastatic disease. They were non-resectable. They could not undergo surgery. Uh, they did not respond to standard of care, chemotherapy and immune checkpoint inhibitor treatment. That's let's say the con conventional immunotherapy. So these patients have a very poor prognosis of less than one year. We gave these patients two administrations of CAN 2409 to teach their own immune, immune system how to recognize the patient's own tumor and eliminate the tumor cells. And what we observed in the cohort of patients who had progressive disease at enrollment, that means the tumors were growing despite optimal standard of care immune checkpoint inhibitor treatment, 
we observed uh, a median overall survival of 20.6 months. So that's way longer than what anyone else has shown. And these, we see that these tumors gradually decrease in size, but most importantly, these patients live longer. Uh, and the treatment was well tolerated. We do see flu-like symptoms, like you get with any vaccination approach. It's a, it's a vaccination against the patient's own tumor. So think of mild flu-like symptoms that last less than 24 hours uh, that are very easily manageable. So very exciting result. Also for this program, we got fast track designation from the FDA. I'll tell you what, Doc, if you want to give me a help with cancer, I will deal with the flu for 24 to 48 hours. No problem, no complaints on my end. Your company's doing such great things. Tell me what's in the pipeline. What else are you all cooking up? Yeah, we are testing the same medicine, CAN249, in another area of huge unmet need, which is early localized prostate cancer. No new treatment has been approved in the last more than 30 years in early localized disease. Everybody else is focused on late stage disease, metastatic disease, but prostate cancer is very common. It's the second most common cause of cancer in men in the US. And this problem has not been solved. It's the second most common cause of death due to cancer in men in the US as well, and also in other parts of the world. So huge unmet need. We've done a very large clinical trial. We have 711 evaluable patients in a phase three trial. This study is going to read out in Q4 in the last quarter of this year. And then we have another large randomized clinical trial in a slightly different population of early localized prostate cancer, so-called active surveillance population. We have also 187 patients in that trial, fully enrolled, is also going to read out this year. So this year is incredibly important to us. We have already positive data in pancreatic cancer. We have already positive data in lung cancer, as we discussed. We are hopeful that we will see the same in prostate cancer later this year. I mean, with all the success that you've had, I feel like the word of the day is CAN2409. I hope someone in your C-suite has a tattoo of CAN2409. But I think it's amazing what you guys are doing. We talked about the past, the present, and also what's in the pipeline. But was there anything else that I missed out on bringing up that you wanted to discuss with our viewers? Maybe I should add that we have a second investigational medicine in the clinic, which is called CAN3110. It works in a different way. It's a herpes simplex virus. I mean, these viruses do not have a great reputation, but we engineer them in such a way that they attack tumor cells while sparing the healthy tissue. And we have, pre we have dosed CAM3110 now to more than 50 patients, 5-0, with completely therapy-resistant glioblastoma, brain cancer. They failed neurosurgery, they failed radiotherapy, they failed chemotherapy. Many of these patients have only a few more weeks or a few more months to live. We gave them a single injection of CAN3110 into the brain tumor, and we have demonstrated that we can double the expected median overall survival. We published these data in an absolute top journal, which is Nature. You can't go to a higher impact journal. Uh, we got fast track designation for this program as well. And now we've asked the question, could it be even better if you give the patients multiple injections? And that work has just started. And we just announced that we have dosed the first six patients with up to six um, injections of CAM3110. You know, I gotta ask you a question. You're working on so many different things. You have one drug that is being tested in different types of cancers. You also just mentioned a second project that you've got. How do you kind of make sure that the company is focused no matter how many projects are going on, right? How do you kind of stay laser focused and make sure you're optimized for everything you're working on? Yeah, it's a great question. So when I joined this company and became the CEO of three and a half years ago, we went through a very rigorous prioritization and we asked the following question. So kind of filters that we applied. What is the reason to believe that this is going to work from a scientific perspective? What's the medical unmet need? What's the commercial opportunity? What's the developability? What's the regulatory pathway from an FDA perspective? So these were the filters. We eliminated many programs. And uh, we use CAN249 to create a pipeline in a product. Every time we do an experiment in one disease, it will inform what it might look like in a second disease. So it's very efficient. CAN3110, uh, the good news is we don't pay for this program. We have been very successful in getting non, so-called non-dilutive funding. Here, this is completely funded by the Breakthrough Cancer Foundation with a big grant. You don't see it in our numbers, but it's our medicine, but we don't pay for the development cost at this time. Also for CAN249, we've been quite successful in getting grants. 
We do very deep biomarker research, which gives us a very deep understanding how this works. We've been successful in securing a grant from the PACT, P-A-C-T, Partnership for Accelerating Cancer Therapies, which gives us access to the brightest minds in academia, in the field of biomarker research. They also do the work and they pay for it. Uh, so this is how we've become very efficient in delivering quite a lot while keeping a laser focus on getting to the inflection points. Two biggest takeaways from me, you know, it's sometimes you invest in the man or woman behind the scenes that's running the execution of the product or the service. It clearly seems like you have the brightest minds there. And I love this quote that I read the other day. Uh, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. So I like that you guys are laser focused on the few select where you can optimize your results. And clearly it's paying off with the great success you've had. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. That is Dr. Tuck, who is the president and CEO of Candel Therapeutics. Ticker on the NASDAQ is CADL.